Hey ya Hypedesk and Great! In this series, we will dive into Django security. Specifically, we will guide you through some of the best practices for building more secure web applications using the Django framework. It's a series I'm doing together with Arun Ravendron, who is the author of Django Design Patterns and Best Practices, now in its second edition. To find out more about him, check out the links in the description. Why should you learn about Django security? First of all, to maintain control over your web application. You don't want anybody else to take over your server or allow them to execute some JavaScript on the client side of your users. Second of all, to protect your users and their data. Anytime a user gives you a certain piece of data, they're essentially communicating some sort of trust which you don't want to abuse and you want to make sure that the user has a good reason to trust you. Then also to dissolve the magic behind Django. Because if you've been using the framework until now, you surely know that it does a lot of things for you which you don't know behind the scenes. And security is just one of those aspects. Now, one of the most simple things you can do for maintaining security is just setting debug to false. There's so so many people that don't do this and then unnecessarily expose some of their debug data if anything goes wrong. Setting debug to true when developing is very convenient, but you should never forget to set it back to false when you have deployed your application. Essentially, in this corner we have firewalls, encryption, antivirus software, etc. And in this corner we have Dave, which is the human error. A major part in security is understanding humans, how they try to seek shortcuts without implementing the proper security practices when you get to deployment. And therefore, I think it's very great to learn about security and just give yourself that education. When thinking about security, you essentially have to wear two different hats. One is the developer hat, which wants to make things work. The other one is the hacker who wants to break things. As you can see, there's a certain conflict going on between them. While many developers don't really think about the possibility that anybody's going to go in and essentially try to break their system, that's why when developing, you really have to be able to switch between the developer and the hacker hat and essentially try to break your own system in the process. These are some of the security topics we consider covering. First and foremost, we have secret keys. That's very important especially when it comes to source control and understanding where it's used and why it's so important to keep it secure. Then we have pickling, which can be very convenient, but also has its dangers. SQL injection is such a major issue with so many newbie PHP websites. Depending on your feedback and wishes, we're then going to jump into more topics such as CSRF, then cross-site scripting or session hijacking, social engineering, which is very, very major. And as I said, Humans play a big, big role in security. Authentication, logs and admin are three more topics, especially the admin is very misused by many people. So if you want to see more parts in the series, make sure to leave a comment down below in this video and on the next videos as well. And something I think worth mentioning is that no system is 100% safe. Because really at the core of development and everything we're doing with computers is abstraction. We can think of computers as a system where one layer builds on top of another one. When we are programming, for example in Python, the computer of course doesn't understand it, therefore it has to be interpreted down or compiled down. And in that process of course a lot of bugs can happen, and that's just related to programming languages, but now we are more on the security side of web applications. But what we can do as humans is just figure out our role in the system and try to minimize our pain points as much as possible which can limit the potential security holes. Anyway, that's it for now. Make sure to check back in in the next part where we are going to jump into secret keys. I hope you've enjoyed this introduction and are looking forward to the series. Make sure to share it around because security is one of the most neglected areas I think of development because having security holes in your system is quite, quite dangerous. That's why it's very important to talk about it and learn about it, which is what we try to do with this series. Anyway, I'll see you in the next episode. Take care and cheers.